What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfect Schnellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my psychology playlist. In previous videos, we had an introduction to psychology. We talked about neuroanatomy, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord, the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves, the sympathetic nervous system versus the parasympathetic nervous system, fight flight versus rest and digest. We talked about the excitatory neurotransmitters versus the inhibitory neurotransmitters. We discussed sensation versus perception and we talked about the five senses and we differentiated between general sensation and special sensation. We talked about classical conditioning and operant conditioning of behaviorism. We talked about short-term memory and long-term memory. We discussed motivation, cognition, consciousness, alertness, orientation, hypnosis, sleep, sleep disorders such as nightmares and night terrors, language disorders such as Broca's aphasia versus Wernicke's aphasia. And we talked about the differences between identity and personality. Today we'll talk about psychological disorders, particularly depression and dysthymia otherwise known as persistent depressive disorder and how it differs from major depressive disorder. Click the like button, click the subscribe button and let's get started. This is part of my psychology playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum understanding and retention. You can also find this video in my psychiatry playlist. In addition to psychology, check out the other playlists that I have for the MCAT, the IMAT, the DAT, SAT, ACT and AP exams. What's the definition of psychological disorder? What is the abnormal in the psychology textbooks? Well, the short answer is no one knows. No one has a clear definition of what's abnormal. But there is a consensus among scientists. A psychological disorder is a characteristic set of thoughts, feelings, and or actions which lead to distress and maladaptive functioning in society. If it's causing distress and making you maladaptive in your community, that's a psychological disorder. But what if society is wrong? Psychologists do not have an answer for this. There are different approaches to approach this topic of psychopathology. There is the biomedical approach and the psychosocial approach. The biomedical approach basically says that everything is biology. Everything is about your genes, your anatomy, etc. But the psychosocial approach says that everything is psychology or sociology. It's not you, Mac. It's society. It's your surroundings. Now, let's take an example. Here is myocardial infarction, which is death of heart muscles. That's what you call a heart attack. Heart attacks could be angina or infarction. Angina is cell injury, but myocardial infarction is cell death. If we ask those who follow the biomedical approach, they will say, MI is caused by a problem in the mechanism of the cardiac muscle. Ha ha ha. No kidding, Captain Obvious. But if you ask those of the psychosocial school, they will say, well, 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 don't forget smoking, don't forget alcohol, don't forget diabetes, hypertension, stress, diet, big corporation poisoning your food, your boomer boss yelling at you, raising your stress levels, etc. So what's the truth then? Well, both of them have a point. You have non-modifiable risk factors and modifiable risk factors, as sophisticated cardiologists might say. Why don't you lump both of them together and create the biopsychosocial approach that takes into account your genes, your anatomy, your thoughts, your behavior, your emotions, your surroundings, your environment, your class, and stigma. Genes and anatomy, that's biology. Thoughts, behaviors, emotions, that's psychology. Your surroundings, environments, your class, and social stigma is society, that's social. Hence, biopsychosocial approach. If you wish to see more videos like this in the future, drop a heart emoji in the comments. Is there an almanac or a dictionary or a reference or a textbook that contains all of these psychological disorders? The answer is yes, it's the DSM-5. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, Edition 5. There are many, many, many classifications and many examples of psychopathology. Here are some of them, including psychosis, such as schizophrenia, delusional disorder, schizophreniform, and more. Depressive disorders, bipolar and related disorders, anxiety disorders. And here is a quick history lesson. 
there is a very, very, very important comparison, which was psychosis versus neurosis. If I was teaching you psychology 120 years ago, I would have told you about psychoses and neuroses and then sent you on your merry way to become a psychologist. There was basically nothing else in the field. Now psychosis is schizophrenia and others. Neurosis is what we call anxiety today. Next, obsessive compulsive and related disorders, dissociative disorders, somatic symptom and related disorders, personality disorders with the three clusters, Alzheimer's disease, which is mainly a memory problem, and Parkinson's disease, which is mainly a movement disorder. In addition to all of these, there are also eating disorders such as anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and binge eating disorders. We have neurodevelopmental disorders, impulse control disorders, and sleeping disorders. Today we're just talking about depressive disorders. If you want to learn about the rest, please watch my video titled Psychological Disorders, which you can find in my psychiatry playlist. Depressive disorders, let's go. We have major depressive disorder. This is what the layman call clinical depression. Then we have dysthymia, that's an old term. Today we call it persistent depressive disorder. Then we have seasonal affective disorder where you get sad according to the season. In the winter or when it's very dark and very cold, you get sad. Which reminds me of what my boy Charles Dickens said in his novel A Tale of Two Cities. Quote, "'Twas the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair." Winter of despair is the best description of seasonal affective disorder. How can we manage this patient? Well, 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 you might consider moving from a very cold place to some place where it's warmer and sunnier. Which sounds like an out-of-touch boomer talking to you. Just move, bro. Or if you cannot move, we can try bright light therapy. Today, seasonal affective disorder is known as major depressive disorder with seasonal onset. Now let's compare between these two important conditions, major depressive disorder versus persistent depressive disorder. Persistent depressive disorder has to be persistent for two years or more. That's what persistent means. And the symptoms are relatively mild. Contrast that with major depressive disorders where the symptoms are more severe. And we're not gonna wait for two years to diagnose you because this is dangerous. This is life-threatening. So just two weeks or more is sufficient to give a diagnosis of major depressive disorder. What are the criteria of major depressive disorder? There is sadness plus five of the following SIG E caps. Sleep problems, maybe you're not sleeping enough or you sleep too much. Loss of interest, we call this anhedonia. What's the purpose of life anyway? Why should I work? Why should I do anything? Vanity of vanities, everything is vanity. Your patient went full King Solomon on you. Increase feel of guilt. Too much guilt. Excessive guilt. As if everything is my fault. It's raining outside. It's my fault. The economy sucks. It's my fault. My boomer boss is yelling at me for printing the paper in the wrong color of ink. The boomer boss is even starting to cuss my mother. It's my fault because I did not pull myself up by my bootstraps. Lack of energy to do anything where you cannot even enjoy sunset. You cannot even admire the flowers. People with major depressive disorder don't just feel sad, but they also feel empty. They feel ennui. They feel nothingness. Next, inability to concentrate on a specific task. Appetite problems. Maybe I do not eat or I eat too much. I vividly remember an organic chemistry student who did not get a high score on the test. Guess what she did? She ate lots of ice cream after she knew about her score. I would have done the exact same thing. I thank God that I am not lactose intolerant, because there is a place in heaven to those who eat ice cream. I'm just kidding. Psychomotor agitation, otherwise known as psychomotor symptoms. Where I start to get physically sick, now I cannot perform motor tasks. I feel the time slowing down for some weird reason. Next, increase this kind of ideation, but I cannot say this word on YouTube because the algorithm is a psycho. What's the fate of major depressive disorder? Unfortunately, about 15% of patients with MDD are going to delete themselves. So to make the diagnosis, you need five 
or more of these symptoms plus sadness for two or more weeks. But persistent depressive disorder is more chronic, it's more persistent, but it's less severe. Not severe enough to be classified as MDD. An example of someone with persistent depressive disorder is the character Eeyore, who was weaned on a pickle. And that's it for depressive disorders. But how about bipolar disorder? I've talked about bipolar in a separate video titled Bipolar, which you can find in this psychology playlist. Today, learn about major depressive disorder and dysthymia. But how about cyclothymia? This was discussed in a separate video in this psychiatry playlist. To learn about organic brain disorders, check out my neurology playlist. To learn about the psychological disorders, check out my psychology and psychiatry playlists. We do not use pharmaceuticals to manage personality disorders, but we do use them to manage depression and psychosis and Parkinson's disease and many others. You can learn about these medications by downloading my neuropharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. It comes with videos, notes, and cases. If you value what I do, help me make more videos by supporting the channel, go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 750 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.